A long, long time ago, before people knew much about science to explain how the world works, they wondered about nearly everything, just like we do today, but they didn't have many answers yet. They might say, the wind is blowing from the east. Yesterday it was blowing from the west. Why doesn't the wind always blow the same direction? They might look up at the night sky and ask, why don't those stars fall down and hit us on the head? They might wonder, why is the ocean over there and the land over here? How come everything isn't dry land or all ocean? They just didn't know. Sometimes it takes a long time to get the right answers. Someone would learn one part of the answer and someone else would add something to it. This would go on and on until at last somebody figured out the answer. Learning a bit at a time like this might take hundreds or even thousands of years. And guess what? It's still going on. We're still learning new things based on what people before us figured out. That's one reason it's so important to be able to read and write so we can learn what other people have learned and tell people what we have discovered. Way back in time, one explanation some people came up with was that the world was planned and created by powerful beings, male and female, called gods and goddesses. Gods were male and goddesses were female. They believed that each god and goddess had power over a part of the universe. These stories help people feel less confused about their world. One day, Warad and his elder son Amur were walking in the vast city of Babylon. Amur said, I guess Babylon is the greatest city in the world, Father. Just look at the palace of King Hammurabi. I don't suppose any other king has a palace as grand as this one. And although the city is busy and noisy and dirty, our temples, where the priests feed, clothe, and pray to the gods and goddesses for us, are calm and beautiful. Yes, my son, replied Warad. The temples are very beautiful and the priests in charge of our religion make sure the temples stay that way. After all, we want our gods and goddesses to be happy. Why, if the sun god grew angry with us, he might not come up in the sky tomorrow. Well, that certainly would not be good, Amur said. Then we could not grow food or see each other clearly. And thank goodness for Marduk, the god of our city, Warred said. He protects us and makes sure that we live well. In return, we must be sure to praise him and give him thanks for all he does for us. Let us go and visit the temple of Marduk. Amur happily agreed to go to the temple of Marduk, for it was one of his favorite parts of the city. Even from a distance, they could see the lofty ziggurat rising up many feet into the air. Its wide steps climbed up and up to the small temple on top. Only the king and the priests of Marduk were allowed to go up there, but anyone could visit the base of the tower. Remember, my son, Warad said, there are many gods and goddesses besides Marduk that we must give thanks to. I know, Father, Amur sighed. We believe that each god and goddess has a power over a specific part of the universe. One for the sky, one for the water, one for all the plants growing out of the ground. I am just glad that Marduk is the god of our city and that we have this grand temple for him. After admiring the temple for quite a while, Warad and Amur noticed that the light in the sky was fading. Warad said, The sun god has done his work for the day and is ready to rest. It is time for us to rest as well. And then, turning away from the temple of Marduk, Warad and Amur started for home. <laughs>